The Grizzlies made one of the worst decisions in NBA history taking Hashim to beat in the 09 draft. They took him number two overall with James Harden and Stephen Curry still on the board. They already had a young backcourt with Mike Conley and OJ Mayo, so instead they went with a seven foot three project. Well, Grizzlies assistant coach Damon Stoudemire later said, he's a really good kid, but I watched him in that first practice. It only took 10 minutes to see this was not gonna work out. 10 minutes, a bust 10 minutes in. Has there ever been anyone that bad? There's a good chance Memphis would have won a championship if they didn't screw up that draft, adding a James Harden or a Steph Curry to the grit and grind era. So how bad was Hashim to beat actually? <laughs> A lot of people will tell you that Hashim Thabit didn't love basketball, but the kid busted his butt trying to be successful. Growing up in Tanzania, he would wait until people left a computer at a coffee shop, then use their leftover minutes to email D1 college teams in America. That's dedication. He first picked up a basketball just two years before that when a local coach asked him, hey, do you play basketball? You're really tall. Hashim told him, no. I play soccer like my dad. And besides, I don't have any basketball shoes. Hashim's family was really poor and it was impossible to find his size in Tanzania. Not actually impossible though, because the next day that coach showed up with a pair of shoes and a jersey. He asked the 15 year old if he could dunk. And when he did, people went crazy, which is when Hashim fell in love with basketball. Like I guess he was an okay soccer player, but when you just stand up there and dunk and the whole gym goes crazy, you fall in love. And by the way, he never had dreams to make it to the NBA. The one thing Hashim really wanted was to go to college and get an education to take care of his family. Pretty soon, word spread around East Africa. Hey, there's a seven foot 16 year old kid who's a beast. So he went to boarding school and competed in tournaments to try to get his profile up. Then he moved to a high school in Houston, Texas that invited him to the United States to get on college radar. Hashim eventually got those college offers and he chose UConn who had an elite program but their coach Jim Calhoun admits he didn't really know how to play. Huskies had to give him minutes though because no one could compete with Hashim on the defensive end. Even as a freshman who didn't know how to play he averaged four blocks a game and he was Big East defensive player of the year as a sophomore. As a junior though he started to learn how to play. He had a triple double with 15 points 11 boards and 10 blocks. NBA mock drafts had Hashim going top three, either to Memphis at two or to the Thunder at three. So he decided now is the time to enter the draft. And again, his original dream was to get that diploma and another year in college would have gotten the diploma and helped his game. But no one could turn down NBA money, especially where Hashim came from. Yes, the Grizzlies had Marcus Gasol and Zach Randolph already, but Mark back then, if you remember, was still kind of a question mark and Memphis needed defense. So Hashim made sense. They gave him a guaranteed $14.3 million contract. He was picked just after Blake Griffin. Now, Damon Stoudemire said he knew he was a bust 10 minutes into his first practice, but still, the Grizz had a lot riding on this guy, right? Like, they had to play him even if he wasn't very good. So he came off the bench, averaged three points, three boards, and one block before the All-Star break. Yes, the dude known for his defense blocked a shot a game. The Grizz went into panic mode. They tried to trade him to Golden State, but the Warriors said, no thank you. Then they sent him to the D-League, making Hashim the highest pick ever to be demoted. And I did a lot of research for this video, and I saw people say, oh, sending him to the D-League just killed his confidence. But what did he have to be confident about in the first place? The the sad thing is his rookie year of three points, four boards, and one block a game was by far his best season ever. Midway through his second year, he was dealt to Houston, who traded him to Portland the next season, and he was cut just four months later. But what happened next is why Hashim Thabit is not the biggest bust of all time. He signed with the Thunder in 2012, and he learned how to be a pro. I don't know if it was being around at Thunder Vets like Derek Fisher or superstars like Kevin Durant and Russell Westbrook, but he started to take his job seriously. Hashim hired a personal chef. He used to race KD and Russ to see who got to practice first, but it was too late because after a trade to Philly, he never played again in the league. 
But the reason I don't think Hashim was the biggest bust in NBA history is Anthony Bennett. Look, I don't care that Bennett was taken number one overall and Hashim was number two. That's not the point. The difference was their work ethic. Bennett showed up to the Cavs as a rookie, fat and out of shape. I know that sounds mean, but it's true. They both sucked, but at least Hashim tried to get better. Cavs GM David Griffin said, Anthony Bennett's whole life, he rolled out of bed, bigger, better, and more talented than everyone else. And as soon as it was hard, it was over. But as soon as Hashim got cut from his last team, he got back to work. He signed with the Pistons D League in 2015. In 2016, he moved to San Francisco to work with Blake Griffin's personal trainer. The next year, he signed with a Japanese team to prove he's not a bust. After that, he moved to Washington, D.C. to work with another trainer who helped KD and DeMarcus Cousins. But when no NBA team wanted to sign him that summer, he went back to the G League instead of giving up. It is really rare to see seven foot three dudes in minor league basketball because most of those guys aren't in the NBA because they're not very big. And so just a few months into another D-League contract, he got cut again. That D-League GM told the media, we've got a lot of nights where we just can't play him. We can't ask him to make those kinds of switches. And that's the struggle he'll face at every level. Look, 2009 was a horrible time for Hashim to go to the NBA. You could no longer be a seven footer who's limited on offense. Just five years later, the Warriors won a chip with 6'6", Draymond Green as their starting center. Then every center had to learn how to shoot. Christoph Porzingis, Anthony Davis, Carl Anthony Towns. If the beat was drafted 10 years before in 1999, he might still be a bust because of where he was drafted, but he'd still have a job. Look at Sam Bowie, who was taken number two in 1984 ahead of Michael Jordan. A seven foot one bust for Portland, but he still played for 10 years. Sean Bradley was number two in 93. Seven foot six, mostly known for getting posterized by Tracy McGrady, but even he played for 12 seasons. Hashim wasn't as good as those guys maybe, but he was drafted 10 years too late. Instead of being the next Sean Bradley, he was the first Taco Fall, a big guy with almost no skill that got embarrassed in the NBA. But how bad was he actually? I would say the second biggest bust in history. But as a person, Hashim is a gigantic success. He earned about 16 million in five NBA seasons, which is more than enough for his goal of taking care of his family. He's super involved in youth basketball in Tanzania, and he's teaching kids Basketball is a way out of poverty with a college education. It's not all about going pro. Hashim actually just retired in 2022 after playing overseas for a few years. He says there's actually no regrets. He gave it his all. He just lived in the moment. So I wouldn't say that he's a bust at all. Guys, if you want to see a really inspirational story, check out what happened to Aaron Baines because he was in the league for, you know, almost a decade, won a championship, but then he had a tragic slip and fall incident at the Olympics, almost paralyzed. He's trying to make his way back. Uh, what he's doing right now is really inspirational, but I made a whole video about it right here. Check it out.